All right. So the first order of business is approving the minutes. You did the Middlesex microphone. We can't hear you anymore. I, I, I knew it. How about now? How about now? Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Here we go at 512. Um, approving the minutes of October 1st, 2024, regular meeting, action likely. Do we have a motion for that, or do we have any... Uh, I'm going to I make a motion to approve the minutes for October 1st, which I just read, and they looked great. I will second that. Oh, Liz is going to second it. Liz is going to second it. All right. All right, the next order is approving. All those, aye. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of October 1st, 2024, say aye. Aye. Peter says aye. Yeah. Liz says I, I'm sure. No apparent nays. So passed. Approving the agenda for the uh, next orders of uh, for today, October 15th, regular meeting. Action likely. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda for October 15th. Wait, I need to Wait. just want to add an amendment. Oh. Okay. So the amendment is um, you guys have an amended agenda, which includes discussion from the Bandstand asking for perennial funding so they don't have to ask for funding every year. That's coming up, and I, that's on your agenda. What's not on your agenda is um, signing uh, Liz, well, Liz or the chair needs to sign a notice of vacancy for the budget committee after George Long and Echo redesigned next month. Last month, we need to do that. So that's it. So just, I'll add that to the minutes. We, uh, I'm going to make a motion with the amendment that Sarah just said to approve the agenda. I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. No opposed. No opposed. Okay, we're right on. Uh oh, someone's going to. Uh, Liz came on. Oh, it's because of me. Oh, it's because of me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the next order of business is reviewing the 2023 EWP project construction options. Action possible. Discussion with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission already updating the town's parcel mat auction. Action possible. So the first part is reviewing the uh, 2023 EWP uh, project construction options. I would imagine that's why Brian and, and So, so, yeah, Brian, that's, you... that's us. Yeah, thanks all. Um, Brian Voigt and Lincoln Frasco with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, and Mike LaPointe, who's also on the calls from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and he's been the, the point person we've been working with uh, through the NRCS on this emergency watershed protection uh, program effort. So where we are in the process, um, we released the bid documents a few weeks ago. We received a, a single bid from J. Merrill Construction. Um, the bid itself exceeded the amount of funding that we currently had on hand. Um, so we have uh, 440-ish thousand dollars, 420,000 dollars, sorry. Um, and the bid came in at about $670,000. So that set off uh, a, new, uh, a new train of paperwork. Um, essentially, uh, the town had a couple of options, um, go ahead with all of the projects and hope that the NRCS is going to come up with additional money uh, or uh, identify a subset of projects and... Uh, <clears throat> move forward with those uh, while the uh, process of requesting additional funds from the Natural Resources Conservation Service uh, played out. Um, like uh, all good things, government, we're taking things down to the wire. Uh, Mike emailed us sometime this afternoon. And Mike, maybe you could just give a, a quick update on sort of where we're at in the process in terms of funding. Um, I got an email about 20 minutes before I emailed you saying that our funds our technical or financial assistance funds, which covers construction expenses, had been returned. So the way our the federal government works is at the end of the fiscal year, they sweep any funds uh, and then they reassign a new fiscal year code to the funds and return them to the states. 
So we got our construction expense funds back. We're still waiting on our technical assistance, which pays our salaries plus administrative and engineering expenses. So if there's any engineering expenses that come up that need an amendment, we don't have the funds right now to do an amendment for that. But the I submitted the funds pre-commitment pre -commitment request to Bill Hamlet, who's our FRS specialist. He's the person that uploads it into our FEMI program with FPAC. FPAC is the agency above us that has to verify the funds are sitting there and they basically earmark them for an amendment. So once FPAC sends back the signed document, we'll start the amendment process to add the funds. The funds will be going there. We've got the money sitting in Vermont. It's just a matter of going through the paperwork, the steps needed to do the amendment. So once we get the FPC back from FPAC, I route the agree amendment documents to be signed internally within RCS. Once Travis signs that, I upload it to ServiceNow and the grants management specialist will generate the agreement, send that to me, and then I send it to the town to sign. Town signs it, sends it back to me, and I have Travis sign it. And once Travis signs it, the funds are available for spending. And then once Travis signs, I send it back to the grant management specialist, and she uh, will update fed, uh, Easy Fed grants with the, the funding information. But once Travis puts his signature on it, the funds are available. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Mike. So, um, on, Brian, before you start, yeah. Lisa, I have a question. Sarah, I have sure. a question. Just for the minutes, I, I just couldn't follow you. Just going past all the gobbledygook of everything. So, the bottom line is that this overage that you have it will be covered, the 200000 or whatever, that will be covered? Correct. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, so, um, you know, where that, that leaves us, I guess, and Mike, if you're willing to, to chime in here, I, I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, the, the town is in a position where essentially there's a, um, you know, a bid that exceeded the amount of immediately available funds. It sounds like that other $240,000 is coming down the, the pipe. Um, and to me, it's just a matter of, whether the select board wants to sign off on a contract for the full six hundred and seventy thousand dollars, knowing they're two hundred and forty ish thousand dollars short, or um, waiting for the NRCS process to play out, and sort of where that uh, that leaves us or the the town in terms of getting construction going this year. I would say right. that we that we go ahead because it sounds like it really would be problematic if we stalled and we'll just use this good faith knowledge that it's here and it's just going through a process. I mean, because otherwise didn't it involve stuff around his bonding and insurance and all of that and just timing, right? I mean, right. this could put off all our EWPs for next year. Correct. Well, you know, um, not to muddy the waters too much, but one, you know, another option, Lincoln and I were looking at the the breakdown of the projects. And essentially there's one really expensive project on two different properties, the 587, 589 Brook Road. Um, you could go forward just with that project right now or with the other five projects on the list. You know, the math works out such that you could do that that one big project or all of the other small projects and still fall within that uh, $420,000 limit. If Mike is confident that the funds are are forthcoming and it's just a matter of time for the the process to play out then Liz I I certainly agree and and would support the the suggestion you just made. Um we did talk with Jason from from J Merrill Construction uh, he understands the the situation, and he was certainly willing to, you know, be flexible. That said, if we could make life easier for him, I think he would certainly appreciate that as well. So I, I guess I would just ask Michael. So are you sure? How sure are you on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't talk to Bill, but he's the one who sent the email out. So I assume when he checked Femi and they were there, the funds are sitting in our account. So basically we draw off that that account. So I plan on calling him in, in the morning just to verify to see if he's had a chance to upload the document I sent him to FBAC and verify the funds are sitting there. 
Um, we do need one more thing though, either from the town or from the contractors, we need a location for a disposal site. Any material that's not used on site needs to go to a disposal area that has to go through the process of cultural resource and NEPA review. Um, we haven't received anything. So if the contractor is going to provide that, he should provide that as soon as possible. Um, our archaeologist is going on vacation for a week, I think, here coming up in the next week or two. Um, and he's the only one that can certify the cultural resources. Who reaches out to Jason Merrill? Yeah, who's been working with Jason? I mean, we, we can certainly talk to, to Jason. I remember one thing that came up on the pre bid site visit was a question about whether or not the um, town gravel pit could be used as a disposal site. You need to you need to put it there to monitor it for invasives. Is that the, what I'm understanding? Do you just need a site? Or yeah. do you... Okay. We we need a site. It's got to go through cultural resources, and the NEPA is our environmental review. Wow. Do you have enough room? Do you have enough yeah. room? Question. Yeah. If it's yeah. an yeah. existing yeah. gravel pit, usually that's just a matter of just showing where it's going to go on there and documenting it. Um, if it's a uh, Non area that takes a little bit more work. If trees have to be cut, it goes through the bat habitat. It takes a little longer. The foreman and, says, "Yeah." Okay, and like okay. the gravel, once once the EWP agreement is closed out, all the work's done. If there's gravel sitting there, that's yours to do as you want. If it's in the gravel pit, um, it's just under our purview as long as the agreement is open. What was, what was that? What was that? Um, that's what I was I, thinking. That's what I was thinking. We'll probably end up happening. So yeah, happening. I'm fine. So, yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Right. So okay. you, right. so you so will work. If so I understand, if I understand, you're being willing. You're being willing to work with Jason, work with Jason and coordinate that. And Brian. 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 All right. Thank you. Just send Thank me you. a map with an area outlined on it where the material is going to get stockpiled, and I'll submit it for review. Okay. Do we have to have a motion? Well, wait. Uh, we, Paul has a question, yeah. but Brian, you're going to go ahead and, and talk to Jay Merrill about those things that we need that Michael just talked about, right? Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Paul. And I'll reach Paul. out to I'll reach out to the foreman. I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but I'll reach out to you so that we can get a a map uh, submitted to Mike as well. No problem. Anybody else? I had, I had a quick question. There was 400 and change allocated for this project. The the only single bid came in at 600 and change. That's a pretty dramatic swing. Just curious, where? What what was the level of advertisement for soliciting bids for this? And and were there were there other folks at at the pre bid or or meetings or anything like that? I'm just curious. It just seems like a, a pretty sizable swing, uh, and especially with only one bidder. Uh, can I answer that real quick? Um, there were yeah. four bidders that showed up for the site showings, but one of the reasons the prices exceeded our estimates is that the change of scope, especially on the uh, first two sites on Brook uh, Road, uh, they were received damage in July of 2024, which uh, extended the scope a lot greater than what it was originally. So we're doing a lot more work than was planned. That was from the damage of last year. Right. Understood. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a quick question. If you're going to put materials in the sand pad, you going to lock it back up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the doors are open right now. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking safety okay. wise. Okay. So, do we need a motion or what? Yeah. What? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. So you'll, you'll need a, you'll need a motion for uh, Liz to be able to sign the the contract with J Merrill Construction. So I'll make a motion for Liz to be able to sign the contract with J Merrill Construction, and that we move forward with that. As the total amount. As the total amount, knowing that funds have just been released, and we will likely get compensated for all of it. I can second that. It would be better if you had a number for that contract. You know, so just, 600. Just, just saying you signed the motion. Could they, well, could they give you the final number? What's the final number again, guys? $662,766. $662,776. $776. Yeah, yeah. $766, yep. $766. Okay. 
So you move to authorize Liz to sign the contract for the 2023 EWP projects um, with J. Harold Construction for $662,000. Seven hundred and sixty-six. I would say since it's two thousand twenty-three and two thousand twenty-four. No, 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 no. no. Okay. Yep. That's exactly what I motioned. <laughs> Can I second that one then? Paul, do you have another question? Paul Sermonero, do you have another question? I don't. Sorry about that. No yeah. worries. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All those. Any more discussion? I'll say aye. 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 All, those are, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those, anyone, uh, any opposing? The ayes have it so fast. This, the second part of this is uh, discussion, uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission updating the town's parcel map. Can I just ask a question back to EWP, but about 2024 to Brian? Um, do, we have an, do we have any sense of when we're gonna get notified on who got accepted into that? Or Michael uh, or anybody? I don't know. I, I think that when Abby, I'm sorry, Allie and I from, Allie from NRCS and I went out to do the site visits that Middlesex was maybe number eight in the towns on her list. Um, I'm sure you're closer to the top now, but I would expect it's still a few weeks out before we're gonna hear anything. Mike, maybe you've got a better sense of the timeline. I'm hoping to start hitting him on, I, I've got to review everything that she's done. So um, I've already started. I'm just going down the list as in the order that she did the site visits. Um, that will depend on how many are eligible and how many are not that I have to look at. So I'm not sure what my timeline is going to be. Yeah, thanks. And I, I can tell you, we did review 16 sites, I believe, the day we did the site visits for the uh, 2024 response. Um, and yeah, it remains to be seen how many sites will actually be eligible for funding. Thanks. Moving right along to the uh, uh, updating the town's parcel map. Does anyone have uh, any discussion on that? I can I can start, or if one of the listeners wants to. Shelley has her hand. Shelley has her hand up. Shelley, why don't you move up to the table so you can answer the Actually, Michelle, you stay there. Let's have her move here because the microphone's here by Beth. Here we go, Shelly. Thanks. We actually met with Brian this past week mm -hmm. via Zoom, and Brian's on, on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, looking and doing some research, it's becoming a blister. It looks like 2019, most of the state of Vermont was updated in, uh, in the parcel view for maps. Uh, what I've seen since then is it doesn't look like anything's been done since 2020, so we're way behind. Uh, and my question for Brian, I know you're gonna check into this, is that there was a select board meeting back in 2021, and we talked about that in our meeting about the, the funds were approved for 3,960, and you're gonna see if that was ever actually paid and, and what was done with that. And then we're gonna talk about what it would cost going forward and what the workload would be. And I know Sarah had sent you some information on that as far as from the grand list. Yeah, so Sarah sent me the property transfer tax records, uh, essentially a record that gets created every time a, a piece of land is bought or, or sold and included in that some notes to help me estimate the number of parcels that would require some sort of boundary update uh, through this process. But let me step back to the, the previous effort. Some work was actually done back in the 2019, 2020 time period. CVRPC never invoiced the town for that. Um, we're not planning to invoice the town for that. That was its work that was done. I'm not, it, it's before my time here at the organization. I'm not sure that work was ever shared out, um, but it should allow us to hopefully not have to start from uh, from scratch in terms of the 
2019 changes uh, at least. So based on the spreadsheet that Sarah shared with me, uh, it looks like there's probably on the order of about 50 to 60 parcels that need to be updated. Um, some of those are going to be simple lot line adjustments. Some of those are going to be actual subdivisions where one parcel is sliced up into to multiple uh, different parcels. Given the, the past work that we've done, that, that's giving us a little bit of a, a head start, um, I estimate it would cost about $1,500 for the full suite of the updates to be made. And that includes time that um, you are allocated as part of paying your dues for uh, uh, for membership in the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, um, we we set aside some time every year to perform some specialized work like GIS work uh, of this uh, type. So, um, you know, depending on if you have money in the budget for this year, if we're looking at uh, budgeting for for next year, um, you know, we can get started on this project and have results um, before the end of the year. Uh, again, we would uh, need a little bit of uh, supplemental budget to be able to complete this. Now, what would you need from the listers to do that? I know that Sarah sent you stuff, so you're still going to need like um, probably uh, maps. Uh, yep. Yeah, the, so the actual surveys uh, themselves. And so what we'll do is take, um, you know, digitized versions of those, scanned versions of those, and then we need to register those to where they actually are on the, the surface of the earth, so to speak. And then from that, we can draw the, the parcel boundaries and update the existing parcel data set. Um, with that updated parcel data set, then we will have uh, the, uh, well, depending on when we finish, either the 2023 or 2024 grand list information joined to those parcels, we'll be able to update your tax map viewer on your website with the most current information. And uh, we can also submit the updated parcel data set uh, to the state, which is a, a requirement that they have for uh, managing parcel data at the, at the state scale. Thank you. Wait a minute. Hey, Sarah? So the board's got it. I think what Brian is saying is that it's going to cost $1,500 unbudgeted for, for these parcel maps. So somebody in this board is going to talk about, are you going to pay for that? If you are, how are you going to do it? There's the treasurer, something like that. OK. We need to have a discussion on how we're going to pay the $1,500. If you are going to pay the $1,500. If we are going to pay it. Well, how can we not pay it? Right. Not that I know. Because we don't have any money. Right. When is it due? I mean, there's, not, there's not a due date necessarily. It's just that your tax, your parcel data set is fairly out of date at this point. It's five years behind. So there, not only are you know the grand list records. If you were to look at your your online map viewer, it's showing grand list data from five years ago. That's sort of an easy fix. The, the more challenging aspect is making sure the parcel boundaries are all up to date. Um, and so that's the, the part that would take some effort. Now, I did mention before that um, every year as part of your dues for CVRPC, you are allocated some time for specialized work like this. Uh, if you're not in a huge hurry uh, to get this done, then we could spread the work out over over two years and um, get everything updated um, and completed by fiscal year 25. Of course, that means there will likely be additional records uh, added in during that uh, that need updates during that time, but we can deal with those uh, as they as they come along. If, on the other hand, you're thinking about, um, you know, uh, townwide uh, reappraisal and, and other things like that in shorter order, then I would recommend um, to the extent possible, the board look for some money to cover that extra effort. And we prioritize getting this done before the end of the calendar year so that the data is ready and available for the, the listers as uh, quickly as possible. Oh, well, since we're having a real appraisal coming up in the next year or two, it almost seems like this should be done first. Um, we're already getting complaints from residents asking why the maps are wrong. So we've got a little stack of people that we've got to get back to once this gets resolved. 
Uh, my next question would be is, following after this is all done, yearly we're going to send you something, and you would let us know approximately how much that is also so we can make sure we budget for it? Well, uh, yes. The short answer to that question is yes. Um, the slightly more nuanced response is it's unlikely you're going to see 60 lot line adjustments in a yeah. single year. Um, and unless you really zone aggressively for, for new development. Um, and it, given the, the relatively smaller number of adjustments necessary, that's work that we could accomplish within that, um, you know, those allocated hours. And there shouldn't be additional budget associated with that work. Okay. So okay. do you need a motion? Or does any more discussion? It sounds like we could budget it for July 1st next year. Would that work? No. No? no? It's $1,500. I'm going to make a motion that we do it. $1,500. So it's me too. Wait, there's Cheryl. Just a minute. It's $1,500, but he said we had some money that was set aside every time we paid dues. How much money was set aside every time we paid dues? That $1,500 includes the, the allocating. That's on top of. That, yeah. Okay, so but if we hadn't had it done in the last year or two, was there any money that came forward on that? If we're behind on doing it, we've been paying dues every year? Brian, did you hear any of that? I did hear the question. The, the short answer is is no. It's not. You don't bank your your hours. Um, you, it's sort of a use it or lose it. Is my understanding. Okay. So sorry. Oh, that's okay. I make a motion that we spend the money to get it done so that we're in shape for the new reappraisal. Well, the question would be where where do, where, where, where do we want to take the money from? Cheryl? <laughs> I have no idea right now. I mean I don't have I don't have anything like that in front of me right now. If we have I mean, if we have there a, when I spoke, map, I spoke to Dorinda and she said something about discretionary funds. When we, we have discussion we are using the discretionary okay. funds up really quickly. There's only four thousand in there. We they use twenty three hundred to you know compensate Zara and then there's it's just a request already also for some postcards. So you know what I mean? So that, that money is getting sucked out really quickly. I'm sure that we can pull it from, well, we could find a place to pull it from. So we'd be at 38, if, if between me and, and, and the 15 she needs, we'd be at 3,800 or 4,000. Right, but then we also, if they approve the postcards, there's gonna be other money comes out of that. You know what I mean? So it's, it's gonna be cutting it pretty close. I, no offense to anybody, but I would rather spend the fifteen hundred dollars on this than postcards for uh, voting purposes. Sorry. Okay. So Liz is on the move. Liz, are you going to be able to vote for this? I've made a motion that we give that that, that we spend the money that we need to spend so that the thing is done before. Have I authorized the treasurer to. Yeah, authorize the treasurer to get fifteen hundred dollars of discretionary out of our discretionary fund budget to complete this project. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Any more discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I don't see it. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thanks, folks. I'll be in touch with uh, Sarah and the listeners to, to get this underway. Thanks, all. Okay, we're a little bit behind. <laughs> but, um, moving right along, we have the listeners right here. Uh, at 520, listeners, uh, errors and omissions to correct the 2024 grand list value for 28 Rich Road. Action likely. When we did the um, the PTTR for the buyout for 28 Ridge Road, because we we're no listers, mm -hmm. we didn't change the tax code from tax vote to non-tax vote since the town bought it and FEMA bought it. It was a FEMA buyout. Right. So the town got a tax bill. So, yeah. so that's... So we that's can't afford it. <laughs> and that's, that's been changed, but it's just bringing it to the okay. like, board's attention. Okay. What action is necessary then? to approve the errors and omissions, then you have to sign it. Right. 
I'll make a motion to approve the errors and omissions. I'll second it. Second it. Peter seconded it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. So passed. All right. We can move right along in two minutes here. The joint meeting of the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. Action possible. Okay, so we're up to 87 calls so far. We've got two more months to go. Uh, eight calls during this period. We had one mutual aid out that ended up being canceled, and one or two mutual aids in, which were uh, close um, close to town line. So it was confusion on where it was. Um, max response is seven, min three. We dropped down a little bit to four point seven five for our average. It's still a good average. Um, Engine one out five times, six one time, tanker one one time, rescue out twice, truck 14 not out, and no POV calls this time. Uh, we had 89 southbound car accident. It's a two-car accident. Um, we had Shady Rail and Route 12, a dump truck rollover. Ooh. Um, fortunately, there was nothing spilled but what was in the, the dump body. So no hazmat or anything like that to deal with. Um, we had a car fire on Bulldog Road. It came across as a two-car vehicle fire. Um, ended up being one car that caught on fire on its way to being dropped off at Bulldogs. Um, that one up here was uh, called in because it's, like I said, there was some confusion. Center Road, there was a false, there was a fire alarm. There was a false alarm and it was cooking. Uh, Western Trailer Park was the structure fire we were called out for, um, but before we even get trucks rolling, we were canceled. Um, I guess we only had one mutual aid in, my, my mistake. Um, 89, mile marker 55. Right after a pretty hefty rainstorm, there was a fire called in that was along the interstate. Um, nothing found, and we were canceled by Eric. <laughs> yeah. uh, we had a um, vehicle that supposedly was northbound across two lanes of the northbound, through the median, through the two lanes of the southbound, and ended up just south of exit 9. Again, there was nothing found there. Hmm. Uh, and the interstate was covered from Montpelier to Waterbury and back. Uh, then we had a got a call for a tree that completely closed Route 12, but the, the <laughs> tractor trailer couldn't get through. When we got on scene, it was partially in the southbound lane, like maybe about a quarter of the way. Yeah, not even. <laughs> so I don't know where that big tree went, but it wasn't there. Um, Fast Squad, we had a total of 16, which is the same. Uh, 12 medical only calls. We had hazmat review last. A uh, month, and that helps for the, those that have Firefighter 1. That's one of the requirements of training they have to have. And it refreshes everybody's using the orange book on um, hazmat issues and how to use the book and where to go and how far to stay away and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll just say that there's nothing to report for repairs. I don't want to jinx anything. And purchases, we had to order a new pair of boots for somebody. That is all we have. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Okay then. Okie doke. Thank you very Thanks, much. Jeff. See you next month. We now have Annette here. Annette just arrived. Five forty-seven. Five forty-seven. Uh, we're at the uh, highway okay. update. Uh, we have the uh, bi-monthly road report from Eric. Um, With a spelling error that I found. Reviewing post-flood uh, road reconstruction, action possibly. Possible, sorry. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I'll just uh, read your eight, uh, just kind of go off of my list here. Um, we don't have any uh, equipment issues as of right now. Uh, we finished work on East Bear Swamp. Uh, we replaced a couple of cross culverts on the flats towards the end of the road, um, plus filled in some washouts. 
We worked on the class four section of South Bear by ditching that and stone lining it. Um, after the storm, it washed quite a bit. Um, let's see, this week, this past week, we went through our trucks to make sure they're ready for winter. Um, made sure everything was operating properly. And we ordered some new tires. And this week, we're moving the excavator over to McCullough Hill Road to start making it safe for winter travel there. What, uh, the only question I had there was, uh, <coughs> how long do you think that, are you gonna go the whole length? We're gonna go as much as possible, absolutely. Okay. Are you gonna like start yep. where the culvert's out? Mm -hmm. And is that is that something you're gonna replace for them or not? No, I think we can reuse that. Bigger part. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yeah. but yes, we are gonna we are gonna repair that. Okay. And that then the um, the uh, down where the culverts are there that you're gonna there's, uh, there, armor that. Yes. Yeah, so th there's there's two sections above where you are in those two other S yep. curves that need to be armored. Mm -hmm. We'll probably do those first, then come down the road. Okay, very good. So can I just ask a question? When you said, are you going the entire length, you're talking about the Hill Road, right? Correct. Okay, yep. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Any comments? Paul. Paul? Guys, just curious how dirt tech's coming along with their projected schedule that was posted on the town website um, with work that's supposed to be happening for 2024. For 2024? 23. You mean? Yes, performed in the year. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, well, they're certainly behind behind because of the storm. Uh, I, I actually need to check in with them. I didn't get a chance to check in with them today, but uh, I think they're backfilling the, the box culvert on Portal Road. They started today. Um, they should have that buttoned up before the end of the week, um, and they're going to start resurfacing. And there's some other repairs they're going to be working on to make things safe for winter travel. It's, it's Will they get their entire contract? No. 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 I don't, I don't foresee that happening, but they're going to get a good portion of it done. Okay. Do you have any more, Paul? Sure. Uh, it, the only thing I'd say to that, uh, just a suggestion, might might be good to uh, get an update from Dirt Tech, Eric, uh, to, to update the, the um, schedule on the town website, because I think it's still reflective of, of what would have been oh, scheduled okay. yeah, pri prior to the 24 flooding event. Um, which, which, as we all know, has blown everything out of the water. So it just might be good so people have got a, you know, more up-to-date thing, especially as we close in the winter here. Okay. Is that it, Paul? That's it for me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering, you had the... Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, well, no, nope. your, t your connection is <laughs> terrible. Liz, you're uh, I have a good question, but go finish up what you were going to say, Ben. I was just going to say we had the. Uh, okay. We we had the meeting, or you 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 put out the new contracts, and was that Monday? You that had the pre-construction on Friday. Friday. And Monday you opened the bids. No. 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 That is postponed for a little bit. We have to. Is that the one that's going to go to the twenty-first? Let me just go check. The website. Yes. It's going to go to the. It's 20th. probably going to be extended from that too. We got to redo some stuff. Okay. Yep. No, I was just wondering what yep. what happened with that. That's all. Nothing much right now. Okay. We got to we got to revisit it. Okay. There was too many unanswered questions. Really? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. How long do you? Uh, oh. I think I asked that question. How long do you think it'll be? It'll take to. Uh, do you just go until it snows or on McCall yeah. Hill? Yeah. Yeah. But really, that I don't think it's going to take that long. I don't either. No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. So, moving right along, um, see if the board wants to rat ratify the submission of the application for um, the uh, road erosion inventory. I, I already, I already admitted them. Um, 
Yeah. So um, we were told by the state to apply for this grant because they have all sorts of money. And um, so we already applied and won it. So, let's, so I'm going to make a motion that we apply for this grant. <laughs> I'm going to make a motion that we apply for the REI grant. That's that, we, just that just for going. clarification, that that is to pay Central Vermont Regional to do our road inventory, mm -hmm. road erosion inventory, right. so that we as a town don't have to do it. Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got two grants here. I think you're getting them confused. No, he's right about that. The, the municipal one is similar, super similar. Yeah, they're the same, aren't they? No, no, we can we can. No, turn one is money so that you can do the. Okay, sorry. One's inventory and one right. is, be, you know, if we change the policy on culverts, that we can look at. The REI is for road erosion inventory. Road erosion. Yeah, road erosion inventory. It says right. it right here. So I'm going to make a motion that we apply for that. Okay. <laughs> I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Thanks, Liz. It wasn't we want it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Um, Can I just say what this next one is? Sure. <laughs> this next one is something we get every year. It's just a V-Trans grant um, for $6,000 with an in-kind contribution. So uh, it just needs approval and a signature from the, we need a lot of signatures from the select board chair. And when you say in kind, you mean actual work, not money. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to make a motion to approve that. <laughs> it's for town-wide erosion inventory. It's also erosion. Erosion is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. We are going to be so inventoried <laughs> on our erosion. So approving and signing. The motion is approving and signing the annual VTrans grant. Yeah. That is. Agreement. BR 1230. Yep. Of, of six thousand. $64 for townwide erosion inventory. I can second that. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any aye. Other? aye. Thanks. No opposed. Um, okay, next is considering um, a new access permit for 217 Brook Road. Action likely. Is that the one we have? Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's on Liz's desk. So, you want to explain what this is? So, this is for Ellicasey's. So yeah, Ellicasey's place where the bridge is gone. Yeah. They're putting a new bridge in yeah. and they're changing the access point. They're moving it up Brook Road like 100 yards, not even. Is that like a 90 degree? Right? It'd be a 90 yep. degree off Brook Road instead of an angle? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's going to go straight across and then up to the house. All right. I want to say it's going to be like 60 or 65 Doesn't feet Liz sign this? It's yeah, you just, I just pulled it so you wanted to see it. The okay. No, the bridge itself. But we're, we're, how about the access? If it's I about, uh, it's, it's not quite 100 yards from where it is now. Up this way or down? Up that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. East up there. Okay, east up <laughs> Brook Road. All right. Or east, northeast. So we need a motion to approve yeah. the uh, access permit for two. Right, motion there. Peter. Peter. All Peter. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 No. Liz? Well, Liz got her hand up, I think. She says aye. We just uh, can't hear her because she's yeah. done. Okay. Aye. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving right along, Revo reviewing and revising a policy for culverts in the town right away, no action. So we're going to talk about this again this weekend, this week, yep. this meeting. Okay. Anyone want to start the discussion? I, I would. Go ahead. So as you know, uh, the road committee unanimous, unanimously voted to suggest that this is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I've looked through all of the um, all of the samples that Sarah has given to us, mm -hmm. and frankly, right now our policy removing the highlighted areas is probably the best one that I've seen. I don't think we're ready. I, c I would volunteer to rewrite the policy, and we can come back at the next meeting and and approve it if that's something people want to do. So, Eric? I got one thing to add. 
So I was at the uh, Central Vermont today for a meeting, and one of the things of topics of discussion was driveway culverts because we're talking about roads and erosion. And uh, there's a, quite a few towns that are visiting their driveway culvert policies right now because of that. Just, just thought I'd put my two cents in. Thank you. So I hate to kick the can down the road, but I'd love to table it. I'd love to table it until next time, and I will, I will take uh, from all of the different policies all the best stuff to present to you all. Oh, oh, the only thing, I, the thing that comes to my mind is always money, mm -hmm. but uh, I think we could budget it, mm -hmm. but I don't know what we do if we pass it right away because we, pro you know, if a lot happens, we don't have money to do that kind Correct. of thing. Correct. Right. So that may be something you could start in spring 25 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. That right. we have a time. All right. So be it. We'll table uh, table that until uh, next meeting. Um, moving right along with the treasurer's report. Yeah. Thought, <laughs> update the uh, FY25 situation. In light of the 2023 and 24 emergency expenditures, expenditures for flood repairs and other fiscal issues, action possible. Well, you know what? I think you should begin by the microphone. Also, speak slowly because I'm running out of numbers. No, no. Well, just get, uh, there you go. Honey. You got this. Hold on. Let me sit next to you. Make it better. Yes. Come on down, Cheryl. <laughs> Come on down, Cheryl. Well, I don't like doing this. It gets I'm easier. Public, I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> All right, so. Neither am I. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to tell. <laughs> um, so, currently, right now, we have $1,481,000 in our checking account. Those orders that I just gave you guys are $898,000. So, that's going to leave us about $580,000 in the bank. With that being said, the contract amount for Dirt Tech and all the change orders came to $2,362,000. We currently have paid everything that we've had to date that has been revised with the exception of one contract payment, which was for September for $512,000. So basically we're going to have to take um, another line of credit. Um, Vermont Bond Bank has actually offered us another loan. It's only a 12-month loan at 0.5% interest from $100 to $1 million. So that's going to take time to do, though. So whereas the line of credit, they can give us our money by the end of the week or give us a portion of that money. We don't have to borrow the entire $3 million line of credit, the new one that they've offered us. We can take a little bit at a time to kind of bridge ourselves until we can find out if we can get some money from the Vermont Bond Bay, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that's basically where we're at. <laughs> so what do you recommend? I think that we're going to have to, for now, take the line of credit and then apply for the money for the Vermont Bond Bank. And then I'm sure that they'll probably say, well, you got to pay down this debt, like they did last time. Yeah, like they did last time. Yep. And We'll have to negotiate out with them what the terms of the agreement are. Okay. I was wondering. I could see her like. <laughs> She's on the move. Um, hey, Cheryl, this is three million dollars. Shut your phone off. <laughs> is this three million dollars? Where is this the the original three million dollars? No, the this is a new line. This is the, the new line. Yep, we've already borrowed the three million for the first line of credit. Right. So now this is another three million. Yeah, this will be another three million. Yeah. Yep. Because so far we have we've got one point two well one point three million for the flood for twenty twenty four. Um, we've paid one point seven out to Dirt Tech alone. I'm gonna have to get these numbers for the contract. Okay. Yeah. So the total invoices that we've paid to date for the contract are one point seven million. So I guess the Peter court. has questions. Peter. So I'm behind on where we are with FEMA. I know we partly collected any money from FEMA. Do we have any idea when more of that money is going to be coming? 
Dirk said it would probably be closer to December or something because it has to go through the feds and then it has to go through the state process um, in order to get our approval. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I think we'll be lucky if we get it in December, to be honest. But in terms of where we're at with FEMA, um, Eric and I are wrapping up the last of the spreadsheets this week. At the very latest, we'll maybe need Dirk next Tuesday, but by October 22nd, He'll have, FEMA will have everything that they need from us to repay us. Um, yeah, so before the end of this month. So, are we still expecting that we're going to collect 90% of the cost? Ultimately? Yeah, what did he say? B work, B work is 100%, but I don't know that C work is, and Dorinda's always been, Dorinda has been kind of saying this. I think we're going to be on the hook for 7.5% of the C work. Which is, which is how approximately how much money? Oh, Jesus. It's 7%? It, we came up at like 400000 or something. I yeah. 400000 Liz is saying, at least. I mean, it's, it's millions of dollars, so it's 7.5%, yeah. Of the whole thing, okay. like yeah, not of right, pay. right of our yeah of our what we owe yeah what we would have to pay. Once those checks come start coming in, they're big checks. I mean, there's these these roads cost a lot of money. There's a lot of lot of dollars going on those spreadsheets. And my understanding, I thought I learned it from you, Sarah, like years ago when this happened in Irene, towns the Vermont Bond Bank came back again. And like people bonded what they owed, right, for their portion, their seven percent. Right. I don't think you got that from me. I don't know. About okay. Can I just say something? Mm -hmm. We'd just like to compliment Eric and Zara, who have done this diligent, diligent work. And Zara, I know, had spent all weekend on those spreadsheets. Yeah. She has wow. taken yep. this project that was in a slog state. And she has Press her foot on the gas. And Eric's message is great. Yeah. Listening to them, you guys have done a really good job. We would be screwed. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And Eric and I. Thank you. Three cheers. Yay! Yeah, we're almost done. We're really, yeah. it's just, it's That's like amazing. that many questions and we're done. <laughs> With 2023. With 2023. But 2024 <laughs> is going to be so easy. Actually, Dirk already has the Dirt Tech um, roads that have been completed for 2024, and he's going to be working on those spreadsheets for us, too. So yeah. that should also be going emotion. to DC ASAP. Yes. Um, the state had wanted us to slow us down on that, and we said, Eric and I said, no. <laughs> Do we have to invoicing have alone. Sorry, Cheryl. Um, it's the invoicing alone you got through is crazy. It's it is crazy. It is. And we still really actually for, with that. for the flood twenty twenty four, she's got a revised invoice number four and she's still got five and six to do. Yeah. For that flood. Yeah. So was there some action we needed yeah. to take? Do you wanna authorize the treasurer to no. What's that? No action? No. So is action possible? To, to approve another bond? I mean, to approve another um, loan? Line of credit? Line of credit? Is that what we're, is that what credit? you're asking for? Isn't that what yeah, we're doing? Yeah. We don't have to do a line of credit. Yeah. All right, didn't realize we're at that stage. Then sure. I make the motion to. The community bank? Yep. So it's another three, just straight up three million dollar line of credit from the community bank? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to make that motion. I'll second it. And Liz is going to second it. <laughs> No more discussion. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Vic, can I ask um, Eric that question I wanted to ask him in the car now? When I was trying to ask a question in the car, but nobody can hear me. Right. This is about the roads. Um, it, I had been talking with Carol Picard, and I forgot that I never asked you about this. Um, there's a apparently there's a culvert like if you're heading up um, her road, Brook Road. Um, from the village, there's pasture house. There's a culvert yep. that she. Um, I, I couldn't quite. I, I can't visualize it how she was explaining it, but she is very concerned that 
if something doesn't happen to it, the next big rain, the water's gonna go like straight into her addition, like where she built that addition. You say it's on the northern side of her property? Well, it's on the side. Or up, up uphill side? Of yeah. The I'll stop and look. Okay. She know. described it something about how it empties out, and yeah. she's very worried about it, and it needs well, somebody it to look at brook. it. I don't know. Maybe it's the angle that it's at. May, it's something like that. Yeah. I can. That. I'm. I'm gonna go to her place after this, um, for something else. But um, I'll ask her to explain it again. But I well, just. I just stop by tomorrow. And look at okay, it. and look at it. That'd be great. Thanks. Can I ask a quick question? There's a culvert on the other side of the road. It's a fine. It's beautiful. It's like no, we gotta get it back. That, that was in place. You can't have it. <laughs> it's just I getting know, to it. I know. <laughs> I know a couple of people wanted to know if they if they went and got it, they have it. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. no, the town's paid for that. The town's keeping yeah. it. Yeah. We just got to be able to get to it. Yeah, someone <laughs> drove down the road dragging one of those. Yeah. Huh? Someone drove down the road dragging one of those four footers. Oh yeah. How we can tell you? Well, maybe that was one of the people that asked me. Probably. Ah! <laughs> Wait, was he begging forgiveness or was he asking permission? Yeah. He was telling me that, oh. hey, it's free for the taking. The town's not taking it. Good thing you got his name, Vic. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't Vic. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I assure you. Okay. That was great. On time. Keep going. Uh, moving right along here at 6.30, and I have... Uh, 6.10. You're early. 6.10, yeah. Consider the uh, Middlesex Band request for perennial funding. Action likely. Do you have any uh, discussion here? Any thoughts? Uh, I don't know. There's supposed to be someone from the Bandstand Committee who was here to talk about this. Elliot Burke? Nope. Um, Dexter? Uh, Mark no. Sweet? Sweet, yes, Ron Sweet. Ronnie Sweet. He's yeah. not here. You know what? Can I say something? You can say. I'll, I yeah, would I like guess. to say that this is kind of a bad time to ask, and I'd love to table this for like God, budget January season, January or season. February or yeah, please. The budget season. The budget yeah. season. Have them put it in their budget. Yeah. It's coming pretty soon. Okay. Yeah, it's it is. Like it's like next, no, it's November. Next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, is it more than five thousand dollars that they want? I think they want, last year we gave them, so I think what they want is to not come every year and ask. Yeah. Isn't it 1200 But they have to. And they, uh, they have. Right. Just so. a part of the budget. Yeah, they have to present their budget. All right. So, so then that's a want, no. I think last year you gave $1,500. Huh? Last year you gave them $1,500. I think it's in the budget. It's 1500 I want my money. Anyway. 12 or 15 right? right? I think it's 15 Call 877 yeah. So it sounds like then perennial funding isn't going to happen ever. Oh, I thought it was for perennial. I did too, but what they want oh. is like is not to have to ask us okay. every year. I really flowers. thought it was for perennial flowers. <laughs> well, I thought it was an interesting ask. It was ask. their turn. No, honest to God. I thought, I'm not going to monkey with it. Liz, honestly, I was with you. I was yeah. going to be like, why can't all of us, do, why can't they just dig out the gardens and we'll bring them down to the, I was with you. I was right. like, I have so yeah. many day lilies. They yeah, can okay, good. All right. So but, if we so say the, annual funding, are you going to be right. picking up petunias? I no, mean, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> but so the answer is no, they have to come every year Yeah, they year have to come every budget. year. Okay, yeah. So that's right. an easy one. Okay, so they have to come every year. Budget. My motion that's is so no, funny. they have to come every year to do yeah. the budget, just like everybody else. All right. Second. Vic seconds. <laughs> 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 I'll, 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 yeah, okay. Are we voting on that? No, I, What's that? Yeah, we have to vote. We have to see how those in favor. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. What? This is a, you're making a motion that somebody has to come every year? Well, no. I don't know. We didn't know. We didn't know, Sarah. I'm trying to get out of the game. I'm trying to get ahead of you. <laughs> we don't we have know to any make better, a motion. Sarah. You can just tell them, sorry, it's part of the budgeting process. You've got to come every year. I don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to make a motion. All right, that works. <laughs> or just tell them the select board wasn't in favor of that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So this well, is the last one. Exactly. Sign notice of vacancy for budget committee. That's the last okay. one? Yes. You're, you didn't write it on. It was an amendment. Right. So that's the one we're on now. Okay. The next, act, uh, the next thing is um, sign a notice of vacancy for the budget committee. You've already Wait, where do you see that? So, uh, no, that was added. It was added. It was added. added. Oh, okay. It was added. Amendment. Okay. 
Just to explain, George, uh, you guys accepted oh, right. his resignation at the beginning of September. I just need, um, really, you don't even need a motion for this. Who's just I just signed it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do, do we have to do that for all of these? Yes, I, a lot. I've never seen, I've, I don't feel like I've ever signed, like for listers and, no, because the listers are voted in, but like for any committee? When somebody reti retires and sets off a board, the select board has 10 days, will be on 10 days to put a notice of But this is a committee. Board. The budget committees are elected positions. They are? Yes. yes. Okay. I don't remember this. So we have elected, okay. so one of the listers stepped off, we have to okay. do it. Well, if the planning commission, someone stepped off, we have to do it. What about the road committee? Nope. Okay. When it's not during, when it's during a, um, when, elected when it's between, down from, from a board. okay, yeah, okay. when it's between, so that gives uh, the voters the chance to say, yeah. no, because that, he was elected that notice to the budget committee. Yeah. outlines the statute saying they, they were, they were these people don't well. want, don't like the person that the board appointed, they can then petition for a space okay. for a special town meeting to overrule Who's the down board's on decision, that? but that yeah, he's moving to the, right. in, the, in the notice. So. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. And just a, as a note, um, I, he wasn't officially elected. It was Mark. Mark was elected, but I think the rest of us on the board were It's an elected position. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving right along. Under other business, approving the extension of the 7,200 volt electric distribution line permit for Washington Electric near the residence of John Keith Pepin at 776 Center Road. Action likely. Is anybody familiar with that? No. There's some uh, maps there by Liz. I just signed it. <laughs> yeah, I signed. Yep, here are the maps. Is there any, hey Eric, before you go, any reason not to sign these permits? No. Okay. 7,200 volts is really big. That's all I needed to hear. Bye. Isn't it? And there are two permits. I see them. So our action likely has already been taken. We have to take a motion to approve it. Okay, Zara. I have to make the motion. I think Peter. Should I can. Make the I can make the motion yeah. that we approve the extension of a 7,200 volt electric distribution line permit for the Washington Electric Co-op. Oh, it's for them <laughs> near the residence of John Keith. I thought he was getting something big and special. It's like, no, what, it's what's Washington Electric. Oh, I guess. Yeah, like, what's he doing? <laughs> All right, I'll second it. All those in favor, say aye. 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 No one to oppose. So be it. Consider the mailing of postcards to the town voters, i.e. the town hall, town hall bond question on November 5th, 2024, general election ballot. Action possible. <sighs> Sandy, would you like to talk about this? Sure, I can address this. I'm Sandy Levine with Liz. I serve on the town hall committee. And you folks may know that on the ballot this November is a question of whether the town will approve a bond um, for town hall renovations. And ballots have been mailed to everybody in town. As part of the town hall committee work, um, we developed a outreach plan that included mailing postcards to folks in town. Um, prepared the postcards, they're ready. I realized, oh, I'm not sure where this money to send it comes from. Um, so I inquired about doing that, and um, I don't know if there is money to send it. I don't know if it's in the budget for um, the town to send it. I don't know if it's in the budget for the MERP um, fund, which Liz suggested it might be because there's money for outreach. And others, when we had a, an email discussion about this, other folks in town said maybe it's too late anyway. Ballots are already out. Um, I will say that there is a public hearing scheduled for later in October. 22nd. Yeah, 22nd. In connection with the public hearing, we arrange for a public meeting for people to come and ask questions. We'll give a presentation similar to the presentation we gave before, um, before the, the vote that happened at town meeting, and give a tour of town hall. Um, and I think it's, it's helpful for people to know about that. Um, 
you know, I, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I'm not saying, yes, we really have to do this. I will say I do think it is important that when matters are voted on, the select board takes action to make sure voters know what they're voting on and to know where they can get information about it. You all are immersed in all of this. You know, not everybody in town is. And Front Porch Forum is great, but not everybody Read. reads Front Porch Forum. And I will say, I know as a planning commission member that when we've had issues in specific neighborhoods, when we have mailed out a letter to each person in that neighborhood, that's when people show up, that's when people know about it. So I'm not saying do it now, because I also kind of agree it might be too late. Um, but I, I do think it is helpful you know, going forward, and maybe you know, it's like we're consider having a public outreach you know, some money in budget going forward for things like mailings to let voters know what's going on. Um, so that's, that's what this is about. Um, I don't know, Liz, did you have anything? No, I mean, I just wanted to add that her postcard is, is not like in favor or anything. It's just a notice that this is on the bond vote. Mm -hmm. And I so it's possible. not like it's a, you know, um, an endorsement you guys, you from the select board. You haven't spent postcards, have you? No. Um, no, 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 she hasn't done any. We have, that's what she's okay. coming for. No, because I, I realized I didn't. Good, good, good. No, 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 nothing's been done other than me creating a postcard that says, this is, this is on the ballot, this is what it will do. The information session is this date, and more information go to the What's Next Middlesex site. Right, so it says voters will decide this November whether to approve a bond for up to 2.5 million to support renovations to Middlesex Town Hall. Renovations would address a wide range of safety concerns, making it suitable to meet the town's needs for the next 50 plus years. You can learn more about the project here with the website. Attend a public information meeting and tour on October 22nd at 6 p.m. at Town Hall or by Zoom. Um, so um, the uh, one, Thought, thought I could have is that if we did decide that it was worth mailing, um, that the four thousand dollar MERP grant that we got, which is about outreach, we spent it on. Mm -hmm. What did we spend it on? I think twenty three hundred went to me. And 15. No, no, you're talking. That's no, 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 no. Oh, oh, this is a grant. Okay. This is a little grant that we got that's meant for things like outreach about energy Wasn't and things the like that. First one you got. We yeah, and we have to spend it by the end of, of next year. And like the energy committee spent on that banner a couple hundred dollars. Um, so if there's something that puts in here that says something like you know that will address you know safety concerns including energy efficiencies, that would probably fit the bill of outreach about energy upgrades, which is what MRFs that four thousand it's a very broad uses for that four thousand um, dollars. so I think that we could totally be a reason. And how much did you think said it cost four hundred? my estimate was and it was like three to four hundred, it was postcard stamps and printing. Yep. Yes. Have Sorry. you gotten in touch with a printer yet? No. Okay. I I I was gonna I, format it and bring it to Whatever right. capital copy is now, and how long, would it, how, 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 how long would it take to do all that? How long before you would get it out? That's a simple question. It would probably not be in people's mailboxes before the 22nd. Yeah, is the 22nd already next week? It's yeah. Tuesday. Right. Yeah. yeah, then it's not. It's, it's not. It's not good. There's not going to be. I've worked for a printer before. They have jobs lined up for days so like you wouldn't be able to get them printed and then with our mail system right now i mean i would count on, i would i would ask for like at least a week to, before i would yeah, expect i don't to i think it's back. too late it's too late if we want them to get for the for the 25th. not that i don't agree 100 percent with everything that you said before it's just it's too late it's too late <laughs> i don't think it's going to be helpful however here's some suggestions Front Porch Forum, Middlesex Families, Next Door, and you know what? Write editorials to the papers, and then they have to print those editorials for free. You need letters to the editor. Letters to the editor. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Hey. So, um, you're, you maybe aren't on Facebook. I think I can post on that Middlesex Families pa Facebook page. I mean, Sandy can join it. I, I don't have a family, yeah. but I'm on Middlesex Families. And I, I post I don't, things. I don't have she probably doesn't have Facebook. Have Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just want to say that I do get calls. I mean, I do get calls about this bond. What, 
if people ask me, or if I do direct them to the 20 seconds, say, come in, give a tour, come, that's what the public hearing is about, all these questions, yeah. and people do have questions. Yeah. And well, I said to them, please talk to your neighbors or your friends. Also, is there just like a eight and a half by 11 sheet, maybe we can do it on orange paper, do we have any colored paper? Because people are bringing in their taxes right now, just to post on your mm -hmm. thing out front, as yeah, people come sure. in, that's so it's going to say. Well. In fact, Sandy, if you send me the prototype for that postcard, We'll just use that, change a little bit of the wording to, we really don't have to worry about the energy stuff now. And uh, make it ADA compatible, which is the big thing. Because this is an inaccessible building. And then we can put it up. And then maybe we can, and maybe the school will put it up too. We've read ads in the paper. Yeah, okay. What about like posted at the school? Red hen. Oh, it's already posted at the school, but I'll do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Red hen. Yeah, all those things, it's already posted all over town. I'll just make it big and bright. Okay, thanks for doing that. Thanks. We may need to do it again, Sandy. <laughs> you didn't have 300 ballots in. Already. Thank you very much. 300 out of how many? 700 or something? 1,400 is a lot of, you know, that's, that's a big chunk of voters right there. Yeah. I mean, there's three weeks out of the election. I haven't, I don't know where mine is. I think I got it. <laughs> Did you get that letter in the, in the mail about our taxes on our electric cars? Yeah. I <laughs> hey guys. Uh, this is Ron Sweet. Right. He is you. You weren't here when they were discussing your funding. Do you, I don't know if you want to oh, take I that. Oh, we were at six thirty. I know. There's there, there was it was this we went been a fast. crazy meeting. Okay. This is All right. All right. So anyway, he's the one who talks about the band. Okay, we thought you were talking about perennial flowers, just so you know. <laughs> and so Zara and I were ready to be like, we're why don't they just ask for that at budget season? Day lilies. Uh, right. So Ron, why don't you go up there so that they can. Right there? Yeah, sure. So sure. People on Zoom can hear you. Um, so you have, you have questions or? Well, I think what we, dis what we had um, talked about was, first of all, thinking that it was flowers. And then finally, it all dawned on us that you were asking to not have to come back every year for funding. That's right. And um, that we decided that that's not, everyone always has to come to us for funding because they have budgets right you usually people will present to us even if the budget is three line items like you know flowers uh whatever band band food whatever that you put on it um every, every single small group comes to us with a with a request in december um so basically you would work with Sarah to say, okay, I'd like to present this year our budget for mm -hmm. the bandstand. And then you would come to us or you could zoom in and just say, we're asking for this amount of money. We don't decide right then and there because it goes, it goes into our, um, well, it goes into our budget. I mm -hmm. think that this is in our budget, isn't it? Right. That we vote on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, then at the end of the, um, a, as we go through and we accept everyone's budgets and we plug them into our main budget, mm -hmm. then we look at our great budget and we say, okay, is this, you know, is, where can we make cuts? Where is it that we're doing this? So you're, you're basically recommending to us how much you would like the town to contribute to the bandstand. Okay. So, um, so that's just how the process works. Um, okay. So we can't just say, we're gonna plug in $5,000 every year for the bandstand. Um, because there may be years you want more, right? right. And right. Like the right. gazebo might be falling right. down and right. you need repairs. And it just also do. puts, yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. does put a stake sure. in your, your relationship with the town and that it you know, is just one of the processes. Yeah, and we love what you're doing. And yeah, I mean, we're all supportive of the band no, stand, but right? Unfortunately, you have to come in every year. Okay. <laughs> if that's it's only once a year. Well, we want to see you every year. <laughs> and if you want perennials, just ask us. We'll dig some exactly. up. Exactly. <laughs> okay. right. Well, yeah, if that's, if that's the way it works, then we'll work within the system, sure. And budgets are coming due November? Are we we start to do them, um, yeah, I mean, we kind of just start to do them November, December, mm -hmm. finalizing them up in January. Mm -hmm. So you can call, you can talk to Sarah and we can just plug you in, you know, because you'll, you'll probably be on a day where it's like, oh, we're having the fire department and the bandstand come and give us their budget. Well, you know, what you guys have decided is that only the major departments come and present. Oh, okay, so they and just give us a letter. Everybody else can just submit okay. emails. Because oh. otherwise it's too burdensome. Yeah, see, okay. we want to make it easy on you. Yeah. And, and okay. You. Especially if it's straightforward. And, yeah. Yeah. Makes total sense. We want fifteen hundred dollars for perennials. So. We we <laughs> I, I was I was coming after having talked with the bandstand just just to kind of lay it out there. Um, so you know a few years ago we we 
we embarked on a new vision of taking the bandstand from just a, a cute little um, venue, which has been wonderful with just neighborhood bands that would play at Sweet Melissa's, to gra we had Grammy winning. I know, you had amazing. Performers, and the, the feedback has been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. and, and we had to kind of absorb additional risk to step up our, our game and, uh, and try to balance the budget with donations, uh, past the hat, past the maple syrup bucket donations and, and sponsors. This year we had four out of seven concerts rained. And, and we held them in the Romney Gym, which acoustically is great. Um, and they were su a success for the people who, who attended. They had a great time. But a lot of people want the outdoor experience. Yep. So our attendance was lower, which really cut into our, like severely cut into our donations. Okay. And right. so I guess just, just um, um, being grateful for, for the support that we've gotten, we were, we were wondering whether we could submit uh, a slight increase to 2,000 just to help us with these additional risks of pulling these huge bands. Yeah, I mean, yeah, submit what you, you know, okay. what you think you would like to ask from us. Yeah. Another recommendation I would have, and I don't know if you're aware of this, is that you can ask for a, you know, an Excel spreadsheet of people's addresses if you wanted to do a solicitation to the townspeople oh. of Middlesex. Okay. You know, like a letter that says, you know, we're collecting donations and and if people that, will send you money. I yeah. guarantee you they will send you money. Donations. Yes, yeah, yeah, people yeah. make donations. You exactly. can do it this winter. You can do it now. Yeah, well, we, we've, we've already had our first planning meeting. Uh, I was telling people. Linda about this. I told Linda she needed to do that. Is she still on it? Linda Belper and Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. So the other option you have, since you're not an entity of the town, is that you can petition, you can do what everybody else does, Kelly Hubbard Library, except for Mott Ridge Deal, whatever. You can get a petition, 75 signatures, and you can ask to be a special article on the town meeting morning. Oh, I see. Okay. And yeah, that is not show. guaranteed every year, and that requires you to do signatures and work. Right. And um, but because you're a town entity, it, I think it's She's a. Not, they're not a town entity. No, they're not. But they are, are in our town. I guess is what I mean. Yeah. Like you're a, a part of our town, Versus right? We're not. It's office. not like we're supporting the you know bandstand of Waterbury right. in our budget. Yeah. So, All right. so what are you saying? Keep it simple. Don't do the seventy-five. No, I'm saying, I, you know, if you wanted more money, if you wanted, say, you know, ten thousand dollars or something like that, then mm -hmm. you know, it, because you were doing something special like repairs or something, then you yeah. would might you might want to do that yeah, yeah, to yeah. get on uh, a, a special yeah. article. Yeah. But okay. And then that gets voted on by uh, voice ballot, doesn't it? The special articles, yeah. yeah when no, they're over, no, it's yeah. on the ballot. Well, no, because no. you're thinking of COVID. You were, oh, yeah, during no, COVID, it was on the ballot. This town meeting in the Romney gym, those who attend vote on special articles. In person. Okay. The only yeah, thing that's on the ballot are town officers if we've got special articles that require an Australian ballot. So if we do, so if we do get signatures, I'm just trying to yeah. understand. Mm -hmm. If we do get the, the sufficient, how many signatures? Are you 75. 75. So if we got 75 signatures, what do we do with that then? We submit it to you, Sarah? Yeah, there's a deadline. Date. All those petitions are on our website, so you can just download them. They have all the due, due dates. I forget what they are. It's like the you know, middle, beginning of January or something. Middle okay. Of so, uh, like January 9th. You would have to get 75 signatures of Middlesex voters, so not other people, Middlesex voters, and you mm -hmm. have a dollar amount. So you say, I'm going to want $5,000 for the Middlesex bandstand, then you would appear on the town meeting morning. Oh, okay. And it's like one of the special articles. So, Bandstand would be first, unless if you take off middle size. <laughs> <laughs> but B, okay. B and right now it's just hidden in the budget that people vote on. Yeah. And well, they vote on it um, at town meeting. the town meeting. Uh, it's a it's, it's a visible. it's a floor vote. It's a floor vote too. It's not yeah. a it's not an Australian ballot vote. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so we have, love what you do. Keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, it's been we great. Love what we do. Yeah, it's been it's yeah. been a really cool concerts. Hopefully, better weather. Yes. But that's, it becomes more of an unknown at this point. Really hard to predict. I know. So, it's um, unfortunate. All right. Well, thank you all. Yeah, thank you so for much. In. But that's yours. I think that's mine. <laughs> but you can have it. I don't, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of listening to your phone. Thanks, everybody. You're thank welcome. You. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. Thank you, Sarah.
We have the orders out here. Uh, you guys have them, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. So last week you guys signed the, cert uh, the certification that you that you follow the road and bridge standards. Yeah. And oh, I'm wondering. I've given you another certification. Yeah. Because the date was October 1st, 2024. And I really think it should be July 9th, 2019. Just go with me. So did you guys I saw the 2019 just, one. Yeah, could you just sign it? I order? signed it, and I wondered, I thought, I said to myself, I thought we just signed this. Yeah, no, it was the date thing, and you're, you know, we were just talking about Okay, it. I did sure sign it. What's this town of Dexter Brookline? Has oh, that's, oh, okay. that was the culvert. Yeah, the culvert. Yeah. Dexter? Yeah, I just I wanted to touch base on the EWP project. Uh, I can wait if this is not the appropriate time. Oh, we already did that, well, Dexter. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that Liz has the notice of award. That's the paper that I gave to Lincoln to have signed on October 1. So that needs to get signed and scanned to me so I can send that to the contractor to get the balls rolling. Wait, 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 Liz is authorized to sign it. I can send it now if you don't have it, or I can just give Liz a heads up that I'll send it to her email tomorrow. I could do either or something yeah. else. Tell, tell me what you know, because we decided to, to move ahead with the 622766, the full amount. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the right number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I so sent the we Regional Planning Commission that form to sign before your last meeting. Which we didn't sign because we thought that the funding right. wasn't all now there. It's time to sign it. Okay. Which is so, what I got. We just <laughs> voted on it. You have to sign this form. It's a, it's a form. It notifies. It gives the contractor written notification that he needs yeah. to take to the bonding company. It's a legal form. It's in the contract. You printed it, right, Sarah? It's right there. Mm, no. no. Um, no, I don't see it. I don't think I see it here. But Dexter, you sent it. Um... Resend it, Dexter, please. I sent it up to who? Liz. Send it to me. And Sarah, what you coffee send? clerk. Can you send it to the Liz.sharp at Gmail, though? Because it takes a while for it to get to my if you Gmail. Send it, Dexter, if you send it right now to clerk at MiddlesexVermont.org, I, I see an award letter. And Liz can sign it. I see an award letter. Did you hear that, Dexter? What is that? Yeah, it's what not the letter, it's a form. Send it to okay. clerk right now and Sarah will print it and we yeah, will there's, sign there's it. The end of clerk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anything Can else? Well, she's looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I see it. I got it. No, I don't. No, I don't. Look, Dexter, you need to attach it. You didn't attach it. I poured it with the attachment, didn't I? No, that doesn't work sometimes. No. All right. I'll send a fresh email with a fresh attachment then. I can see that Lincoln just sent, Lincoln just sent this. He sent the award five minutes ago. Did no, you get I version? see, I, all I see is the New England Consulting Engineers Award it says, yeah, hi, Dexter, the Middlesex Life Board no, voted to day. authorize Liz Sharp to sign the contract. They sent that at 6 o'clock, and that's, I think, what he's, talk that's what he's talking about. Yep. He sent me that email, but it was just, a, just was information. There was no, I didn't think there was any attachment on that. But this form needs to get signed so that Jason Merrill can go to his bonding company and get the paperwork we need to execute the contracts. I just got the Anything invoice else? from EF Wall for the fifteen thousand that we got approved to the forty thousand. So, and I have one more invoice from um, the BIA. Yeah. So I will digitally sign this tomorrow and send it to you. Alrighty. Is there uh, anything okay, else? Okay, I just sent that form.
Okay, got it. Received. You guys, there's a bunch to sign, so don't go running away. I won't. Right. I'm just pack it up. I gotta sign all those. Up. Thank you, Vic, for sharing. Okay, can I adjourn the meeting? You did a really good job. Can I yeah. adjourn the meeting? It's good practice Please. for when I forget my meeting next can time. Can he adjourn? Yes, he can adjourn. Okay, at 638. 637. Nice, Vic. You half an hour in advance. Good job. You did. Okay. Yeah. What a guy. Huh? Good job, Vic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of stuff here. Receipt of the above notice is acknowledged by the town of Will. I will send it back to you as soon as Liz is done. Dexter, you just got, you just approved this. Yeah, come on, Dexter. Huh? This was just approved. Nothing, never mind. At this meeting. Don't get them started. We need this to happen quickly. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. Okay, here we go. She's going to scan it to you right now. <laughs> Bye, Peter.